We are ready for another edition of Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock presented by Rudy's. Rudy's on the South Loop and Slide is ready to cater to all your barbecue needs and they cater for real. You can go by there, get in line and uh, just pick whatever you want. Again, the brisket, sausage, turkey, all those things. If you want to eat healthy, you can do it at Rudy's, which is uh, really cool. You can go in there and load up on the bird. Turkey's great. And then... You know, maybe, you know, if you want to stay away from the bread, you can do that. But, you know, if you want to make yourself a sandwich, you can do that as well. Rudy's has you covered with the country store as well, right inside. And don't forget about the breakfast tacos with the brisket, one of my favorites. And one of my favorites is here, head coach Tim Tadlock. Coach, how you doing, man? Pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I've enjoyed um, a little bit of uh, youngster baseball that was uh, hopping down in Midland over the weekend. It would have been nice to have been here to watch uh, and describe the Red Raiders against UIC, but that didn't happen. But still, uh, not a bad uh, consolation. You, yeah, no, that's really good when you can go see your son play. That's uh, that's probably better, yeah. actually, for you. And you hadn't got to do that probably as much as you'd like to. And Never get to do it in the spring. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. How many games they played down there? They played there? Uh, four games down there. They played two on Saturday and two yesterday and lost 10-9, to nine, just a heartbreaker in the uh, championship game, but uh, really proud of them. And it's just cool to see people at the park. Mm -hmm. It's cool to see youngsters loving this game. And that's what I love is, I mean, it's hard to find a frowny face down there. Yeah, no doubt. You know, and the one, the one cool thing about club baseball and summer baseball is there's been people at the park. I mean, really all last summer there was people at the park. It's and, true. You know, as uh Kind of, you know, things went on the way they should have, and and uh, thought it was really good. Yeah, I've had to adjust to the walk-up songs for nine-year-olds. I've had to adjust to that, trying to, you know. Just I didn't know they had those. Some some of these teams do. They have the big voice guy, now batting, whoever, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of deal, and the music underneath it. So I've had to get used to that. Uh, you had to get used to, I'm sure – not having a series play because when we left Amarillo and I do want to get to that too, cause I haven't had a chance to talk to you about it. Just the experience at, uh, Hodgetown, mm -hmm. uh, you had on the schedule UIC and I guess phone call comes down and wham, right. Is that the way it went down? Just, uh, Hey, we're not going to be able to make yeah, the trip. Yeah, pretty much. I want to say before we left on Tuesday, they mentioned, you know, they might have a COVID and they felt like if they did, uh, they were probably going to have to shut it down and, Call back after that and confirm that. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, what we're dealing with this year. And, um, things happen for a reason. I mean, it's in the middle of finals. We're fortunate to be able to get approved to where we could play in finals and would have been a first for us. And uh, maybe we weren't supposed to play during finals. Maybe the guys needed to study. Yeah, and that's kind of what we were talking about, too. It's like, well, this is, you know, kind of what we're used to anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not so bad. So, I mean, other than, you know, as far as staff goes, you know, we're not, you know, not on the road right now. So that was a little bit different. And so, you know, got to spend Mother's Day at home, probably a first in a while. And uh, guys all got to, you know, definitely uh, reach out there and uh, had a good weekend otherwise. Were there any serious contenders over the time where it said you were actively pursuing someone to play, was there ever a serious candidate to get in there and, and fill that void? Um, I would say no. We had a couple clubs reach out, and it was all contingent upon if their series got canceled, like maybe somebody called them with the same type of news we had. But it was really too late in the week um, to really make any adjustments. It was almost Friday by that time, and um, we would pretty much already – uh, moved on and said, hey, this was supposed to happen. Let's give the guys a blow here and, you know, practice a couple of days through the weekend and uh, give them Saturday off and uh, really just kind of wanted to let them get their legs under them. Did you get any inter-squatting or anything like that, or was it just kind of just an easier weekend? Um, we had some guys see some live pitching on, I guess, before the weekend on Friday, and then, then we got a little bit of um, inter-squat in yesterday. In some of these video games, they have these uh, – it just depends on the game, but they have health meters, you know, and if you get hit by a so – whatever, you know, it could be a punch or whatever, your health meter keeps going down, and sometimes it goes so far down that you, you're 
your character's done. I see your health meter going up with this weekend, being able to just, hey, what's ailing you? Let's get it fixed. Let's help it heal. Some of that going on with this break yeah, as well. I mean, I guess it ends up being nine days as far as like, you know, game competition. And so it was a good, I mean, it will be a good little break as far as that goes. Um, I don't want to say that right now because we got, I mean, really the rest of this week, I'm going to just knock on wood and make sure everybody stays healthy. And, you know, one of those things that's, uh, you don't want to count your chickens for the hatch, that's for sure. Yeah, I've, I've never never been you to, to count yeah, chickens. Yeah, we don't want to you, do You're that. not a chicken counter at all. No, we don't want to count them. No, no. <laughs> Talking to Tim Tadlock here on his show. We've got this one and just one more of these as we start to kind of gallop down the stretch. Any chance for games? These are all questions I have to ask. Any chance for games before we play the Sooners on Friday? I'm um, an inner squad tomorrow, sure. Okay. You All bet. Right. All right. About 345. 345. Come on, out. Come on out and see yeah, it. Yeah, you bet. Gates will be open. Yep. There you go. You get your Red Raider fix that way. What did you think of Hodgetown? Because I haven't had a chance to ask you. Uh, I thought it was a great atmosphere. I thought the ballpark was outstanding. Um, you know, the fans in Amarillo, baseball fans, they've always been very supportive. A lot of really good Red Raiders up there. Um, thought it was a fun day. I um, thought the ballpark played really offensive that night. Um, thought it was good competition, um, and they took care of us. It was a fun night. What were the um, well, the spots that I got to see were, were awesome upstairs. You know, a lot of space, kind of a party atmosphere. The suites were wide open, and they had suite areas inside that were huge, and then you could still go out to the ledge. Just a lot of freedom. What was it like underneath as far as the – the uh, the locker rooms go and some of those things because I didn't get yeah. to get down there I, I don't think we were allowed down um, there typical typical minor league dugouts um, locker room wise they were fine I mean we weren't in the home locker room because our season has started because of COVID and so we they actually did have two locker rooms though still which was cool and uh, somewhere to change and get ready to play and um, and there there wasn't any complaints that's for sure everything was good. What did you think of Cole Stillwell's at bats? He goes big fly twice. Um, yeah, I thought the first one was a double. I mean, off the bat into the I corner. Too. Thought the second one was a fly ball to right center. I did too. And so, I mean, you know, he uh, he put barrel on both of them, and glad he did. Yeah, uh, the Red Raiders defeated Oklahoma fourteen to four. Kurt. Wilson, nobody can say his name now without dragging it out like a dead in his home run. Kurt Wilson, everybody says it that way yeah. now. Um, what are the odds he's throwing meaningful innings down the stretch? Uh, we'll see. I mean, we're going to allow him to get out there every chance we, every chance we get, and uh, that'll be up to him as far as him going out and executing pitches. And one thing about Kurt is the game is slowing down for him. Uh, he's been in college baseball a long time. He's always had good stuff. And uh, you know, if he can go out and execute pitches, he can get people out. What would you think of his performance there? Um, I know it's been a long time. You're having to search back. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was um, – seemed like there was uh, something in there that, you know, he gave up a single um, to Crooks on a slider down and in. And when that happened, I really thought um, – Man, I was kind of mad at myself just because I thought Jace, I could have moved Jace and maybe been in the right spot there and created a first and third, and then they turned a double play behind him. So it was cool. And, uh, I mean, really don't think you're going to get those results the first time out. But he, uh, again, as soon as he broke his thumb, he was uh, he started throwing sides. And he's a baseball player. He wants to help the team. I did have a question from at Guns Up Radio from earlier this morning, uh, hearkening back to the time that we were at Rudy's, and he put the question, you know, mm -hmm. when does when does Kurt Wilson get some at-bats? Is there a chance he picks up a bat the rest of the year, or is it just going to be arm? Um, he got everything off today. He's on a tee today. So, I mean, that's uh, he's on a tee in front toss, I believe. So, kind of slowly getting back to it. So, I would think absolutely. How about Beckel? How would you think he did? Thought Beckel threw the ball really good. Um, Third good. appearance. Yeah, it's good to see. I mean, a breaking ball was good. Uh, fastball command was good. Um, you know, it looked like he had a lot of confidence out there. And 
that's something definitely could help us down the road. Uh, Hampton, too, kind of the same thing. I would imagine your answer would be close to him, but what would you think of Chase and his start? Yeah, I thought Chase, you know, worked through a few jams there. And, um, you know, he's uh, he's got really good stuff, got a bright future. And uh, the more times we, you know, we can get him out there, the better he's going to be. And it's been kind of a weird year, it seems like, as far as midweeks go. And um, sure. lining up, you know, the midweek starter, it seems like it's bounced around a little bit, maybe because of off weeks and things of that nature. And um, at the same time, maybe that's uh, maybe one of those things that's happening for a reason. You know, all those guys, all those kids that are freshmen right now, true freshmen, always think about them missing their high school season and, um, you know, and really just not having the same preparation that a normal freshman would. And so I don't, you know, maybe maybe the less pitches he throws, maybe the better off he's going to be down the road. Could be, absolutely. It's a big stretch run coming up. We've got more coming up with head coach Tim Tadlock. We'll take this first time out. You're listening to Red Raider Baseball presented by Rudy's with Tim Tadlock. And we're coming back next on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And we are back with head coach Tip Tablock talking baseball, all things baseball. On our second to last show, the Red Raiders coming off of what amounts to be an off week with the COVID cancellations from UIC. The Flames could not make the trip down, just too late to find anybody after that. So now we've got the Oklahoma Sooners coming up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Norman. Should be a ton of fun. The Red Raiders are 31 and 11 on the season and 10 and 8 in conference play. Good for third place as Texas and TCU fight it out there at the top. Texas took two of three from the Horn Frogs over the weekend in Fort Worth. The Red Raiders RPI jumped. A, uh, the uh, the rankings jumped up at uh, as far as seven. You know, it's about ten different polls, it seems like. But uh, I was wondering about that, Coach, how the national media and those that vote would perceive an off weekend. And I tell you what, going in Friday, I was a little bit worried that it might slip, you know. But it looks like the good side happened. You went up a little bit. Well, I think most people look at your body of work at this point of the year. And uh, obviously we won some big series and uh, put ourselves in a really good position moving forward. Uh, need to keep getting better, obviously, keep playing good baseball. Um, don't think we've played our best baseball. Um, but the RPI formula, I think, is uh, a lot of the people, as far as the polls go, probably look at that. And that's an interesting uh, formula and just you know just looking at it so basically um, whoever you play on the road you get more points for playing on the road and for wins on the road and then obviously you want them to go win games and we've played a bunch of people that are winning games and that's helping us yeah when you think about the the big 12 conference and then some of the teams that you got to play early on and then playing Oklahoma in a midweek uh, all those things happen, and, and all those things help. But you're right, winning two out of three against Texas. You know, I watched a lot of that as much as I could. Those are two good baseball teams, really good baseball teams. Texas is loaded with arms, and I was like, ha, ha, hot dog. Went down there and got two or three from the Longhorns. What were you thinking? Did you watch any of it, Texas and TCU? Yeah, yeah. oh, I'm I'm following you now. I thought you were talking about our series. I was like, come on, Hacks, that's two weeks ago. I'm good. I'm glad we're not talking about that. I did catch a little bit of it and uh, saw parts of it. And, uh, you know, both those guys do a really good job with their teams. Their staffs do a really good job. And, um, you know, not really pulling for one or the other, just watching baseball just yeah. like you would at home. Hard to pull for either one of those. Well, I mean, it's uh, – <laughs> information really when we're watching it i mean it's you may run into them again it's fun to watch a game like that every now and then yeah it was um just really tight especially the first two games and then 
Texas won, I think, 9-3 to three yesterday. And, again, those two are battling it out at the top. You know, I'm really confused, and I shouldn't be, but I am, about regional selections because I heard it seemed like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two months ago, I don't know, timeline all runs together, that, hey, by Monday, May 10th, we'll know the regional sites and we'll know the super regional sites. What can you tell us about how this process is going to yeah. hash out? Yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, Kirby's on the committee, so he's definitely the authority on it. And um, So I do know they were going to announce it today, and then it ended up having to be approved by somebody by the end of the week. So pretty sure the committee got together on 20 sites today, and I think they're going to get it to 16 sites by Thursday or Friday. Okay, uh, and then we'll hear that announcement. Are the, is the Super Regional announcement included in the regional announcement, or is that something that gets decided later? Yeah, I would have, you'd have to ask them just because it's different this year. So It's really gen different. Generally, the national seeds would be hosting a Super Regional. What I don't know is, is if a national seed loses in a regional, what happens to that? You know, as far as that site goes, for so, super. So say uh, Oregon is hosting a regional and they've been designated as a super regional. If they lose, do you still have everyone travel to Eugene? It seemed like that's what they said originally. That's what I heard originally. seems too. like originally that's what they said. So, I mean, along the way, we're trying to, you know, get a little bit better each day and practice and all that stuff and figure all that will work itself out. Yeah, and it is it is nice, though, to have the track record that you have, a consistent regional and super regional host. I mean, you've proven all you can prove is what I'm saying, right, from over um, the years? Yeah, I don't know if over the years helps you or not, but, yeah, absolutely, as far as our you know, administration and everybody handling a regional and super regional, absolutely, they do an outstanding job and – that has been proven for sure. As far as your team goes, I think that's a year-to-year -year deal. Yeah. Is it June 1st when you can go back out and recruit? I believe so. When, um, will that be a deal when that date hits? And I know that's a, you know, pretty much right in the middle of everything for you guys as far as the postseason. But will you be able to take advantage of that later on? Or is when June 1st hits, does J-Bob hit the road? Or – have you oh, thought about that at all? Oh, yeah, we've looked at it. and uh, I mean, really, when you're in the middle of your season, you do what you can and uh, get in the truck and go see who you can between practices and get back. And um, We're not a staff that misses a bunch of practices as far as that goes, as far as recruiting goes. J-Bob will miss a few, you know, from time to time, and it has been a long time since we've been on the road since last March. You know, I see so, so much. A lot of ground to cover. From football and basketball on social media, and I know you do your put-it-on-the-board tweet. Um, how how has that process gone for you as far as getting, uh, you know, how far ahead do you look yeah. for, for guys? Oh, we're, we're into the 23 class. We, we had commitments in the 23 class before COVID, probably the summer before it. And so – um, it just depends. It depends on the individual. I mean, I wish there was one stock answer we could give you, but it depends on the individual and how well you know the individual and relationships with coaches and really just, you know, what you want to do with that one particular individual. And so um, we we tend to shade on the side of trying to do um, – we, we want to do it at the right time for the kids and not necessarily the right time for us. And uh, I think there's a, you know, young young student athletes can really get a false sense of reality when they're committing as ninth and 10th graders sometimes. And that's why I say, you know, it really comes down to the individual, whether they're ready or not, and how long our relationship's been going with them. Hmm. And uh, a lot of times it's, uh, that's just one of those things, again, it's there's not one answer for it. Um, but we usually get, you know, a couple years out for sure. Yeah. More with Tim Tadlock when we come back. I want you to go by Rudy's. We've got the cups stacked up here behind us in the studio. Looking at that barbecue sauce and that rub makes me want to 
do my own thing at the house. You can do that as well with that barbecue sauce. Just accentuate it. Coach, would you wear that cap? Would you wear that cap there? Oh, uh, you bet. Yeah, it's you red bet. and white. We, we had Rudy's last night at, at our house, by the way. We we they did a really good job getting us through the line, came out and took our order and um Did you get the brisket? We we did. Yeah. We sure did. did you we get had, your stew. We had the stew, we had the brisket or I had the stew, we had some corn on the cob, we had the we had the works. Yeah. Ben that's... Ben was hungry. <laughs> ben Ben ate well. Yeah, we had that last night too. I wish there was a Rudy's in La Mesa because we had that going on with the just he had plateaued yeah. out, you know, just had to get some food. So Yeah, Mexican food in La Mesa is not bad. Yeah, well, that's what we did, Yeah, there even on a Sunday night. So we've got more coming up. We're going to talk with uh, head coach Tim Tadlock. Take your questions as well as we get uh, through our second to last show. Just one more of these coming up. And a week from today, we'll be wrapping up baseball in Norman with the Oklahoma Sooners. But listening tonight on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And we are back with head coach Tim Tadlock as we in the month of May, coming off a, a bye week, basically, because of what happened with Illinois-Chicago. Man, there's still a lot to talk about because we've got the Sooners, the Jayhawks, the Big 12 tournament, then on to regionals. We'll know something, as Coach Tadlock talked about, with the regionals later on this week, hopefully Thursday, and hopefully the Red Raiders – are in that group of 16, and who knows, maybe even get to that group of eight when it comes to super regionals. Lots going on in the college baseball world as we still navigate a lot of uncertainty, as we saw at Visit Lubbock, not literally, but Illinois Chicago not able to make the trip, and that has a big effect. But again, it's it's interesting because it puts the Red Raiders back exactly with what they're used to, and that's no baseball during finals week. Guys are going through finals, huh? I mean, I'm sure they were kind of like, okay, well, we'd like to be playing, but maybe we get to study a little more. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's uh, we don't hear a lot about that anymore. I mean, we're we're very fortunate. Lindy Kiesling, you know, yeah. um, handles a lot of our academic stuff, and um, really with a lot of online classes since last year, and it seems like guys were getting done with finals a little bit earlier than normal, and uh, maybe not as many in-class finals, in-person finals. And so uh seems like everybody's wrapping up pretty good. I do know we got a few that st still definitely have some things to do. Yeah, and I'm knocking that out, and then it'll be all baseball, which is a, a prime time to be a college baseball player when you can just uh, focus on the game. You're there to make the grades. Everybody knows that. Good grade point averages. But, hey, when it comes to time, you can just go roll to the ballpark. That's big time. And a, a kind of a freeing feeling for ball players. Hey, Oklahoma uh, coming up next again Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Eldell Mitchell Park. A uh, team that's that's had some struggles, but also a team that's won two of the last two uh, Big Twelve conferences they played uh, series that they played in with Oklahoma State and West Virginia. Went on the road and beat West Virginia. Yeah, I really uh, had the guys in Stillwater swept and. Uh... For the most part, I mean, really had a double play ball in the ninth and um, misplayed it and ended up letting the game get tied and ended up getting beaten extra innings in a really good college baseball game. And I uh, went to West Virginia, and, I mean, the Wolf kid threw on Friday against them, threw the ball really well, and then came out and swept, swept a doubleheader on Saturday uh, and I think won the first game in extra innings. and uh, eleven. You know, and so, uh, and then they had a kid in game three, the Carmichael kid that pitched at Grayson County, I think, uh, took a no-hitter into the ninth uh, and gave up a triple in the ninth inning. That would have been something if, uh, you know, if Campbell up there in Stillwater and this kid would have both thrown a no-hitter on the same day, that would have been 
I don't know if you ever see that in any league for that matter. And uh, it just goes to show you the amount of pitching in our league. And, um, you know, Skip always does a really good job with his arms and, you know, had as good a rotation as anybody in the country last year and was in a really good spot and had three guys, I think, going first yeah. two or three rounds. And, uh, and this year's really, uh, you know, been trying to piece together games and, uh, you know, and it's, you know, it's a challenge. And, uh, you know, not every guy walks into school ready to be a starting pitcher. And um, I do think he had some guys last year that took their lumps and, uh, you know, and then ended up moving on. And um, they got three guys that are plenty capable now. Um, they got a guy out of the bullpen that they've been kind of getting ready to start and rough corn, uh, who's, I think, in his fifth year of college, started out at, in College Station with a really good arm. Um, his dad pitched at Baylor, dad pitched for the White Sox, and uh, has been around a lot of baseball. And so, um, again, it's gonna it's a challenge. I mean, anytime you go on the road in the Big 12, um, it's a challenge to go put yourself in position to win games and to win series. And um, I think our guys are grasping that. I think our guys are understanding you know what you need to do to do that at the same time it's uh nobody ever said it's going to be easy it certainly is never easy that's for sure you're going to be looking at uh, Braden Carmichael who's six and one Wyatt Olds who's three and five Jake Bennett who's three and three Roughcorn is four and one so you got some really experienced guys there so we'll be seeing some good arms from Oklahoma again that overall ERA is 5.37 but he kind of focused, I think, on on just the recent history here. Took two of three, and like I said, had Oklahoma State swept, and then uh, took two of three in West Virginia, which the Red Raiders did as well, but not easy to do. What, if anything, do you take from the previous Tuesday into this next series? Is there any effect at all mentally on things that you saw, on the performance that you had with the Sooners? Do you take an edge? Does it not matter? Oh, we talked about that a little bit. I guess that could go any way, either way. Um, I mean, really going into a baseball game, you need to pitch and play defense, and that's where it all starts. And uh, in Amarillo, you could probably say that one team did and one didn't. And if both teams do, you know it's going to be a really good college baseball game. And uh, you don't want to go into a game assuming anything like that's going to happen and um, I think both teams had really good at bats through that game. Um, you know, I think it was a really tough challenge for their team. I mean, they drove four hours, got off the bus and played. Um, we drove an hour and a half, got off the bus and played. And so it was a different, um, you know, different set of circumstances for both teams. Um, obviously, we're going to their home ballpark where they're plenty comfortable playing and sleeping in their own beds and all that stuff. And uh, so as far as I wish you could carry the runs over, that'd be good if you could just take the runs from that Tuesday Uh, and put them on the board, but they don't let you do that. And so um, they're going to – I'm sure they'll start Olds on Friday and either Bennett or Roughcorn on Saturday. And seeing that Carmichael took a no-no end of the ninth, I'm sure we'll see him game three. And – Again, our, our focus is to try to get a little bit better each day and uh, let the results come as they may. And um, our guys need to stick with that. And you know, it, this week's an important week. And you're, you know, it's a little bit different in past years. Usually, we have one week of conference left after finals, right? And then the Big 12 tournament. So the way the calendar fell is a little bit different. And so it'll be. I mean, I think it. Could really, we could look back at it and go, hey, the guys did get their legs under them and um, got to playing good and, um, you know, here down the stretch. Do you feel like your starting rotation will stay the same? Um, I don't know why it wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I figured that would be the answer, but I thought I'd just try to make sure. Yeah, there's always things that could happen that could change it. and We look at it every week, and um, as of right now, that's what we're planning on doing. Um, going into the next weekend when Kansas comes here, that series has moved up a day because of the Big 12 tournament. And so a lot of times that's where you make make a change where you don't have to move somebody up. 
Do you have any dog in the fight in the Big 12 tournament and its location? I mean, it's moving from, from OKC to Arlington. Are you excited? Are you uh, kind of wish it would still be there or have any kind of thoughts on that? You're talking about it moves to Arlington yeah. next year. Um, I think both both organizations will do a really good job with it. So I don't think we have any problem with either one. Um, got a, real, a lot of really close friends in both places. Um, so, you know, I guess we better not say. Uh, Oklahoma City's done a really good job with that tournament for a long time. Um, you know, I think the fans really enjoy it there. Um, Arlington, the tournament we went to early in the year, there's it's a really good setup, especially if you get to stay right there where we stayed. It's just, I mean, that's a that's a good setup for college baseball, especially if everything's open. If you remember, when we went up there, and nobody had water at the restaurants, and we just had the freeze and all that. And so <laughs> the freeze, you remember that? I yeah. wasn't there. Yeah, but... and so. God, both those venues are really good. Um, I like grass, so if I guess if I had to make a decision based on that, I'd play in Oklahoma City based on it's a grass field. Got the got the real deal grass and had that up there yeah. in Hodgetown as well. Do you think we'll see more Red Raider games in Hodgetown, or is it going to be kind of a trade off? Go to Midland yeah. and and we, back and forth. We, we'll do everything we can to play up there, and we want to do that. It's um, it's a matter of finding the right opponent. It might have to be two games to get somebody to come in there, maybe to fly in there, because mm-hmm. um, it's you know it's just not real close to anybody as far as that goes, except us. And uh, now, if we could sign up for an hour and a half road trip on a midweek game and be back home by midnight, that'd be fine with us. Yeah. And uh, it just doesn't happen. And uh, so it is a really good deal for us. Um, Again, we we it's a challenge for our program to get people to come out on a Tuesday, Wednesday to Lubbock, much less Amarillo. So we it's you know to build a to build a schedule that's going to put you in a good position RPI wise, put you in a position to be in the top sixteen and possibly be a national seed. Um, you know, it's not as easy as just calling people up and saying, "Hey, well, let's play WT up there at." Uh, <laughs> You know, at Hodgetown, even though, you know, they're doing a really good job yeah. up there. And, it, you know, it could be a good game if could they got be. the right two or three guys on the mound. So, um, I don't mean to say that in any disrespect to them. I know you didn't. You know, those guys are good friends of mine. They do a good job. and um, But at the same time, we're trying to put ourselves in position to, you know, to host at the end of the year. Uh, it's funny you brought up the freeze because uh, we were driving down to Midland <clears throat> as we talked about at the start of the show, and our AC went out. And, I mean, you know, it's 98 degrees down there on Saturday. And uh, I was like, when you said freeze, I mean, that wasn't that long ago. But, no. But, boy, I mean, time flies and the temperatures will change on you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, it, it, another thing that's weird is they've got the FCS Football National Championship coming up next week, okay? So it's Sam Houston State. And South Dakota State playing for their championship at that level in Frisco. No kidding. Yeah, it's just a at weird. At the deal. Cowboys deal in Frisco. Yeah. Well, it's it's that whatever that little. Yeah, I guess the the, the stadium down there in Frisco. I'm not sure. Might might even be the baseball stadium. I'm not sure. Certain. But that's throwing me for a loop too. Yeah, that really throws you for a loop. Because uh, uh, it's usually January, you know, and maybe you pack a sweater. Now, I mean, it's yeah, a little different for those guys that, from Brookings now. I tell you what, that'll be uh, – yeah, that's pretty cool. I wonder if it's getting covered by anybody. Oh, yeah, it'll be on ESPN. Yeah, yeah it'll be yeah, good. Yeah. All right, we got one more segment coming up with Coach, and then we'll be putting this one to bed. It, this is uh, Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock, sponsored by Rudy's on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories 
are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. We are back with the head coach, Tim Tadlock, getting ready for the Oklahoma Sooners coming up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We want you right now to wheel it into Rudy's. Nothing like a little Monday night barbecue, South Loop and Slide. You know where it is, and they'll take care of you. Just very nice people inside Rudy's as well. Kind of point you to what you need, get you taken care of, get you on your way. Or you can go in and have a seat at the picnic tables and feel like you're at kind of a little indoor picnic there. They've got some cold beer there. You'll enjoy yourself at Rudy's South Loop and Slide. All right, Coach Tadlock, it's uh, fun to keep track of your former guys. I saw Taylor Floyd shut down a, a, a team with a big old breaking ball. I remember that. You know, he, he was great in Norman, too, by the way. I remember him coming out and shutting down Oklahoma. Not too long ago, uh, Caleb Killian doing good things. Uh, looks like Gabe Holtz off to a great start. You keeping track of some of these guys? You bet. You bet. I like it when they retweet stuff. That really makes it easy to keep track of it. And this time of year, it's a little bit harder than other times of year. Um, usually, I haven't bookmarked on MILB, the minor league, you know, website where you can go check them all at one time and. Haven't done that yet this year. They all just started last week, and Gabe's playing awful good. I know Grant got assigned, um, you know, and so we'll get around to keeping up with all those guys for sure and I like hearing from them. And uh, what's cool is when they, you know, they're not shy about it. Gabe's not shy about letting people know he had a couple hits. And, uh, <laughs> you know, opening night, I was uh, – Mudcats. I think opening night – he drag bunted for his first hit in his minor league season. He sent me a video of that. He goes, hey, I thought you'd like this. And I thought, man, that would have been good if you'd done that for us a little bit. And, uh, I said something to him, and then he goes, yeah. Then the guys change up when he good, wasn't any good, so I decided to drive one. And he sent me a video of him singling. I was like, Gabe, I don't know if singling is driving it, but okay. So – He's a uh, golly. He's an impact guy for sure. It's going to be fun to watch him and uh, what a what an impact all those guys that you mentioned and everybody that's ever played here um, has had on our program. And we've had some really good players. I mean, there's one walking around campus here in Cam Warren, obviously that you know we I think we all think he could still play, obviously. And uh, but you know, again, things happen for a reason. We're awful proud of him for getting his masters. Yeah, one thing that we're happy with with uh, Cam Warren is, uh, you know, he's not playing ball, but, man, he looks like he's having a great time. I think he's enjoying yeah. – he's still a spotlight guy. Like, the spotlight even shines on him when he's hang, hanging it up. I love that about yeah, him. Yeah, nothing wrong with that for sure. Yeah, he's been he's, up at the booth uh, with us. And been really good for, you know, just to have him around. And, again, all those guys had such an impact. Uh, you know, somebody asked me the other day about uh, – we're. We're trying to talk about Jace and all of his home runs. I had to kind of put them in their place and say, look, Cam and Josh hit some down the stretch that pretty much put us in Omaha. I heard you and, say that. You know, it's uh, – and not to take anything away from Jace. He's had a really good year. Um, but I tell you what, I mean, I had, you hadn't seen two guys really – those two guys other than the pitching and defense, those guys put some runs on the board that year. Man, they did. All right, I got this question from Jim – in Amarillo, he says, at Guns Up Radio, who's the toughest player you've ever coached? Oh, man, that is putting me on the spot right there. Um, I'm going to go with – uh, too. Yeah, well, I tell you what, just uh, what sticks out in my mind, I did have a kid by the name of Andy LaRoche at Grayson County. Um. 31 or 32 ACT guy, graduated from high school a year early to come play junior college baseball. Um, and his freshman year after playing high school football at Fort Scott, Kansas, um, comes in and within about a month tears his PCL. And when he tore it, um, of course, I know nothing about it. I thought, well, he's done for the year. And he put a brace on and played, which I, you find out that you can do that. Um, but that's one thing that really sticks out to me. 
Um, we've all had pitchers, any number of pitchers that, you know, they smell like icy hot at times or something of that nature, and you don't really notice it until you do notice it, and you, and you ask somebody, and they go, hey, what is, what's going on? He goes, oh, his arm's killing him today. And so we've seen those two. Um, you know, we've had some awful tough ones, too, roll through here, obviously. And uh, they'll all be mad at me for saying LaRoche. So that's probably why I'm picking the Grayson <laughs> County guy. That way I don't single one out here. Yeah, I like um, it. Yeah, it's uh, – Well, you got to be tough to play in, in college baseball, I think. And you have to be tough to play here. That's just kind of expected. And that's what I love about the edge of your program and, and um, just kind of that intensity and that toughness that it's just overall, I think. And – that starts at the top with you, my man. Now I'm concerned a little bit as we wrap things up. I'm concerned about the voice, but are you okay? Yeah, I just got a little allergies, and generally I don't get it there. It's just itchy throat. I'm I'm all good. Are you going to be good for this weekend? Yeah, all good. Okay. All right. Uh, yep. He's Tim Tadlock. He's been great today, as always. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be seeing you soon up in Norman, a place sounds, you know quite well. Sounds good. It'll be fun. You know, there's some. Uh, some good chips and salsa up there too, and and a Rudy's. Close and there's by a there. Rudy's about what, a uh, quarter what? mile from the stadium. Maybe about a mile. Maybe a half mile. Yeah. Yeah, just right over there. We'll get down there just south of that, uh, that Sooner campus. And hopefully, come back with a bunch of wins. Thanks, Coach. Okay, you bet. Appreciate right. it. Hex. That's Tim Tadlock. We're going to wrap it up when we come back here again. Presented by Rudy South Loop and Slide. This is Red Raider Baseball with Tim Tadlock on the Texas Exports Network from Learfield IMG College. Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. Back to wrap things up here. This has been Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. And we want to tell you about the upcoming ball games. The Oklahoma Sooners actually play at Oklahoma State tomorrow in Tulsa. So they'll have a midweek. Then they'll take on the Red Raiders Friday this at 6.30. May 15th, that's Saturday at 2 p.m. And then May 16th at Sunday at 2 p.m. as well. So our times for the Sooners, 6.30, 2, and 2. Oklahoma is 8 and 10 on the season. They have been playing better baseball. This will be a better challenge, I believe, than what we saw on that midweek game with the Red Raiders defeated Oklahoma 14 to 4 uh last Tuesday. So, big things coming up for Texas Tech baseball. The Red Raiders are 10 and 8 in conference play. And no matter what, wherever we go, you're going to be able to listen to all the action right here on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Big thank you to Michael Tackett, who was our producer engineer. A huge thanks to Tim Tadlock talking about baseball when we didn't have any action from the previous week. Until we talk to you Friday in Norman, I'm Jeff Haxton. God bless, guns up, and good night from the Hub City.